Okay, workplace math 31.1. This is part two. And it should be on page 17 in your notes there. Okay, working with a partial variation. We talked yesterday about a direct linear variation. That means that the line goes through the origin, right? Well, a partial linear relation means that it still has a straight line. The points make a straight line, but it doesn't go through the origin. Or it doesn't go through 0, 0, okay? The linear relation does not include 0, 0. So where would we encounter this? Well, example 3 tells us that Loris is an electrician. So here's Loris over here on the right, working with this electrical panel here. When he makes house calls, he charges $45 plus $35 for each hour of work. Now, $45 would sort of be your service fee or your flat fee that's charged no matter what happens. As soon as he comes to your house, you owe $45, okay? And then the time that he spends after that would be he would get paid at a, at a certain rate. So there's two parts to the payment here in this situation. So if we created a table of values showing Loris's earnings after each hour of work, up to five hours, it would look like this down here. So here's the solution. So before he's worked any, any hours, okay, he, the earnings are 45 bucks. So just to go out, he gets paid 45 bucks. If it's a really quick, oh, um, listen, sir, um, you know, you didn't, this, it's a breaker switch, okay? All it is is a breaker, that's why you don't get electrical service here. You, you, your breaker's actually flipped. Let me check all of them for you, make sure everything's working, okay, see ya. Takes five minutes, right? He still took the time to go out there, so he gets 45. 45 bucks. You, you still owe 45 bucks for uh, that person to get in their van and to go to your house and to spend that time and fuel and that sort of thing to come out. So after, if he works for one hour, though, you have to add another $35 to that bill. So that's where he works, uh, he earns 80. And then after this, it's $35 each hour. Does that make sense? So plus 35 plus 35, plus 35, and so on. And so that's the listing of what he would make. So if he spent, you know, most of the day there, it would be a $220 bill. If someone had to work, you know, electrician had to work for five hours in your house, it'd be a big, big bill, okay? So that's the graph. Now, or sorry, the uh, table. The graph, uh, you, if you want to graph this, and it's asking, is it a linear relation? Well, if we put the graph on there, at zero hours worked, he owes that $45. And then it goes up 35 each time. So if you have a constant, um, you're adding the constant uh, number each time to get the next point, that's a linear relation. So we have a straight line, but it is not a direct linear relation. It is a partial linear relation. Okay, we good with this so far? Pretty straightforward, easy? Okay, can we calculate the slope of this graph? Sure could. The slope would be, um, pick any two points. I'm going to pick this one and this one. You calculate the rise or the change in the earnings. And so that would be from 45 to 220. So what's that difference there? 220 minus 45 is, what's that, 175? Okay. And then the uh, time or the distance the run would be from 0 to 5. So that would be um, 5. So rise over run is 175 divided by 5. And that gives us what? 35. So guess what? His earnings, $35 per hour. That's earnings, money per hour. So the rate at which he's paid lines up with the slope. Okay. And you could go back and say this, hey, it's $35 increase in pay for one hour. 35 for one hour. 35 for one hour. And that's how we got those points, right? So that's the slope. 35 for one hour. 35 for one hour. Okay, the slope of the graph, what does it represent? I, I Sorry, that's what we just did. Uh, what is the y-intercept and what does that mean? Well, the y-intercept here is that $45 and what that means is that is the service fee or the flat fee. That's the rate. Um, at time zero, that's what's owed. Yeah. Okay, pretty easy. Okay. All right. Okay. 
All right, I'm going to give you some time, a few minutes, to do number seven on your own. This should be just like the example that we did. So go ahead and do number seven. Make sure that graph looks good, quantities, title, all that jazz. Go ahead. Okay, so with number seven, your graph should look something like this, as we kind of already talked about. So your graph distance is the independent variable. Cost is the dependent variable because when you drive a certain distance, then you always calculate how much you owe for a taxi. So, so that's the way you'd want to get that. And we noticed here that this line is not perfectly straight. That the actually the, the rate seems to increase the longer the taxi has to drive, which is interesting. Makes a little bit of sense, I guess. Um, what does the actual question say for B? Choose three points on the line, calculate the slope between the first two points, then between the second and third. And so this is where we should find out that the slope um, you know, between all these points might be slightly different. And so when you do that, you would get a certain slope between two of the points, and then maybe between other two points you might get the same, or you might get a little bit differently. And I would, I would argue that possibly this slope right here it looks to be different than this slope. So did anyone do that and get two different slopes? Oh, you didn't do that one? Okay. Um, you guys did these first two? Okay. Did anybody do these first two and get the same slope? Or did you get different ones? How many of you did, how many of you got finished B? Who got finished B? Nobody got finished B? Okay, so if you, take, if you take the first two segments, okay, you might get the same slope. But as I showed you uh, earlier here off screen that these points are not all in a perfect straight line. So this slope might be slightly different. So let's go back to the, the chart. And, okay, so if you take the the difference between these two costs and divide it by this difference and then the difference between these two costs and divide it by this one tell me what you get so for B I want you to find those two slopes okay so between the first and second points and then the third and fourth points go ahead and, and do that and let's take a look at that all right so this is uh, this is what it should look like when you find the two slopes. So between the, the first section, right? So this first section here has a slope of 1.5, or that is 150 per hour, okay? This section here, according to our graph, looks like the slope is different. So that means the rate might be different. And of course, it is different because this slope, which is the difference in the y values, always take this, the last one minus the one before it, final minus initial, or 2 minus 1, and then uh, divide it by the difference between these two, and you get 1.69, or that's 169 per kilometer. So the rate actually is different. What does the slope represent? It represents the rate at which the taxi driver, you know, charges. 1 $1.50 per kilometer, and then if you make them drive further, the rate goes up. Okay. So this is the second rate. Now, um, what does the y-intercept of the graph represent, right? So the y-intercept would be this one here. Now, what would that represent, given the situations that we've been talking about? What does this y-intercept represent? Who can tell me? Yep. That's the flat fee. That's the fee that you start with. As soon as you jump in the car, you owe 4.95 or whatever it's going to be. 4.50, right? Yeah. Technically, you hop in and you hop right out. Yeah. If a guy doesn't move, I'm sure he probably won't care, but if you call him and he drives to meet you and you get in and decide, "Oh, you know what? I've called you here, but I actually don't change my mind, I don't want to go anywhere." 450. Yeah. Right? Yeah, Four like this. 450. I didn't want you to sit in the presence. Yeah, 450. You owe me 450 for being your friend for the, the few seconds here. Yeah. Okay. All right. So here is a here's another. So you guys um, some more practice here with that one. Uh, let me just 
let me just zoom ahead here and see where we're at. So we do have one more uh, section to go. So let's, uh, let's, I want you to turn with me to this page. The questions in between, I'll give you, um, uh, we'll probably have a little time tomorrow to work, okay? So I need you to turn to page 20 right now. And then this will be sort of the last section. Um, the last section, oh, well, maybe not. Maybe there's one more. Boy, this is a few parts here. Okay. So let's take a look at where were we here now? Oh, where did I just go? There we go. Okay. Let's just do one more section here. Okay. It's a, it's a, long, a long section, but one more part of this uh, for this lesson. So working with negative slope. Okay. So, so far, we've only been working with positive slopes, right? We've been working with lines that are linear and they go up from left to right. That's called a positive slope, okay? So you might want to write this down just in your margin like I'm doing. This is a positive slope going up from left to right. When the line goes down from left to right, that's a negative slope. Okay, so this is what it looks like on a graph. Negative slope. So as we look at it from left to right, from point one to the next point that you measure, you have to go down. See, it's a negative rise. You go down and then you go to the right. That's what a negative slope is. With this one, you go up and then to the right. That makes a positive slope. But if you have to go down first and then right, that's a negative slope. Okay? And literally, the rate of change uh, will be a negative number. That's it. Okay? And it means that every, um, you know, whatever, every kilometer, the, the amount of fuel in your tank goes down, right? That's the situation where you'd have a negative slope. At what rate are you consuming fuel when you're driving? Well, it would be some kind of negative rate. You're going down a certain volume of gas for every kilometer that you drive. Does that make sense? That would be the situation. So I think that's this situation here. Um, Josie's car is a full tank, 40 liters. She knows that if she travels at a fairly constant speed, her car uses about one liter of fuel for every nine kilometers. So that is uses up. That means that one liter goes away, right? It's, it goes down. So the total volume is at 40. After nine kilometers, how many liters is she going to have left? After nine kilometers, it's going to go down how many liters? One liter. So she's going to have how many left? She starts out with 40. And she goes down by one liter, it's going to be 39 liters. All right. Okay, so, so envision this. She's got a full tank, 40 liters. At the rate, she says she uses one liter of fuel for every nine kilometers that she drives. So if she drives nine kilometers and she were to check her tank, she would have 39 liters left. Does that make sense? If she goes 18 kilometers, how many liters would she have left? 38. You see, every group of nine knocks off one liter from her tank level. That's an example of a negative slope where you go down one, down one and so on. Okay. Okay. So um, this question asks us to make a table of values to represent the amount of fuel in Josie's car after she has driven so many kilometers. So let's take a look at how that would look out. Okay. So if she drives zero kilometers, she still has a very full tank, full 40 liters. That makes sense? If she drives, remember we said if she drives nine kilometers, she goes down one liter. So if she goes 45 kilometers, how many groups of nine is that? It's five groups of nine, right? Five times nine is 45. So if she drives 45 kilometers, that's nine plus nine plus nine plus nine plus nine. So that's one liter plus one liter plus one liter, one liter, one liter. So that means she's gone down five liters. Okay? Does that make sense? All right. Um, if she goes 90 kilometers, she's going to use double what she used before, so she's going to use 10 liters, so she'll have 30 left. Another 45, she uses another 5 liters. So here's my question. I don't know if this is in the book or not, but 
How many kilometers will she drive until she runs out having zero left? So if she has zero liters left, she uses all 40, how many kilometers will she have driven? So she uses um, one liter for every nine kilometers. So she can go nine kilometers on one liter. How many kilometers can she go on 40? Anybody got an answer? Yeah. We got 360. 360, that is correct, Amundo. Right, 40 liters times nine kilometers per liter gives us 360, very good. So 40 liters times nine kilometers per liter. That gives us 360 kilometers. Okay. Get that? Anybody have any questions about that? Okay. So the graph would look like this then. Let's just quick take a quick look at the graph. She starts off at zero kilometers. She has 40 liters. At 45 kilometers, she has 35. At 90 kilometers, she has 30. See? This is what we've been drawing. Now, the whole running out of fuel thing, okay, so basically this continues on, and then when does it get all the way down to zero, right? That's the, that's the question. So what is this? That's what we just figured out. So this would have to go, and this, this line, these lines are not straight, but this would have to go so far, and have to, this would be 360 kilometers when this gets to zero. You see that? Now, I don't have enough room on my page to draw that fully, but that's sort of what we just calculated. Okay? Okay, and... That might be part of the question here, I'm not sure. Where was that question? Um, what's the slope of the line? What does it represent? Okay, oh, uh, Okay, explain why the slope is negative. Well, we talked about that because we are losing something every kilometer. Losing, going down. And how, oh, here it is, E, how far can she travel before running out of fuel? So that is one of the questions, awesome. So we figured that out to be 360, oh, oh, they said 370. Well, that's using the graph, I guess. But I'm not sure why, it's 360. it should be 360. Hmm, okay, all right. Okay, so. <laughs> So remember this slope, we should comment on this slope right here, negative one over nine, because you go negative one liter for every nine kilometers. So that is negative one over nine liters per kilometer. What's that as a decimal? That's and negative. Negative 0.1111. Yeah, liters per kilometer. Okay, that's pretty good, nine, nine kilometers per Liter, 0.1 liters for nine kilometers. I think that's pretty good for for fuel mileage. Not bad. Okay. Any other questions? All right. Okay. So um, let's let's do this. Let's say that um, we have about five minutes left of class. So I want you to go back to where we left off here. And I guess that would be probably number eight, right? So your goal for tomorrow is to have, I'm going to say up to, okay, try and get at least up to eight done. That, that's the sections we've covered so far. Um, nine would be this last one that we did. So, so try and have everything done up to eight if you can, okay? That's your goal for tomorrow. All right, and then I'll give you a little bit of time to work on some stuff here uh, from 9 on. Okay, I'll give you part of class tomorrow.